Hello, and welcome to Community Voices, where we talk to Humboldt County's movers and shakers. Today's guest, KZZH's station manager, Matt Knight. And now here's your host, Ray Olson. Welcome to Community Voices right here in the Access Humboldt Studios. I am your host today, Ray Olson, and joining me is Matt Knight, who is the station manager for KZZH Radio. Thanks for coming in today, Matt. Well, it helped that I was already here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for sitting down to talk to me about it. Uh huh. So let's tell me about KZZH Radio, because I really don't know that much about it. Okay. Well, KZZH is a LPFM, it's a low power FM radio station, broadcasts at uh, 96.7 kilohertz on the FM dial. Mm -hmm. um, we got this uh, uh, license for this station as part of a, a, a FCC uh, station giveaway to nonprofit and educational organizations mm -hmm. that happened uh, back in. Well, uh, it happened back in 2014. Mm -hmm. um, so we uh, had, once we were g uh, granted what they call a construction permit, mm -hmm. which is the, the uh, which allows you to start building up your station, gathering equipment and, and things of that nature. Uh, we were licensed uh, officially on uh, August, in August of 2016. And we've been on the air ever since. So you started being on the air in 2016. That's right. And um, do you, is it uh, who? Who? It, what are the programs that you have on your stations? Well, uh, we have a variety of programs. When we first started out, um, it was basically to support the mission of, of Access Humboldt. Our main mission at Access Humboldt is to bring uh, your local governments to you so you could participate in your democracy. So um, Access Humboldt is always uh, uh, cable cast, uh, you know, Board of Supervisors, Eureka City Councils, various boards and councils throughout the county um, so people can find out what their electeds are doing. Mm -hmm. So the idea uh, behind uh, KZZH was to uh, bring that information to people that can't afford either broadband uh, connection or cable television, which is quite an expense. Mm -hmm. uh, all you really need to participate in your democracy is an FM radio and a battery. You know, so you can oh, yeah. you can you can listen to it on 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 that level, right? So that was our main mission when we first started out. Since that time, uh, we've continued our, vo our mission of Access Humble, which is to bring local voices to the community, uh, to, to uh, assist the nonprofit sector, uh, to get the word out about the things that they're doing, uh, bring news uh, and information to, to folks, to support youth, in uh, media, mm -hmm. uh, to be there when uh, emergencies happen, to provide emergency information to the community. Mm -hmm. um, so that that is sort of our, our reason for being. Yeah, I, I would imagine there are areas of Humboldt County that don't have internet access, so you would be a service to those sort of underserved communities. Yes and no. Well, uh, because uh, we are an LPFM station, we're limited to 100 watts. Uh -huh. So your average FM station in Humboldt County is somewhere in the neighborhood of three, several thousand watts. Okay. So, you know, in that respect, we're sort of the mouse that roared. We, we you know, we cover quite a bit of territory, yeah. uh, but not the, into the hinterlands. So. We can't get back into you know the smaller communities that are, that are beyond you know the, the the Bay Area. So, but we do reach Eureka, Arcata, into McKinleyville. I've talked to people that get us up in Trinidad, uh, just because of our location here on the coast. Uh, we do get out pretty well, and of course we are are also online for people that have access either through their smartphone or for the computer. Um, they can go to kzzh.accessumble.net and uh, find our stream and listen to us if they are, say, uh, beyond uh, you know our 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 ter a terrestrial signal. Um, so, uh, how does your programming run during certain hours, or we run twenty four seven? 
20 foot, wow. Yeah, so we have a mixture of programming, including national programming, like Democracy Now! and to the best oh, of our knowledge. Wow. Uh, and then um, programming that's created here at Access Humboldt. So um, I personally produce a number of programs here, including uh, a show that I do with the editors of the North Coast Journal called North Coast Journal Preview. Mm -hmm. um, we um, work with, um, I, I have a, a, a show called uh, Radio Centro, which we work with Pueblo de Centro. It's a Spanish language show. Mm -hmm. And we do serve that community. So we do have a Spanish language block. Mm -hmm. So where we have Radio Bilingue, Radio Centro, um, and, and things that, you know, PSAs and information that's uh, pertinent to the Spanish speaking population. Mm -hmm. um, but we also are a home to uh, local people who are producing, say, podcasting, you know. Um, you know, and what is podcasting but radio without the tower, mm -hmm. you know, essentially. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, one of the things I always try and sell people who are doing podcasting is that, um, you know, you have an audience that listens to you online, but there's a whole other audience out there that may know nothing about you uh, or your show. And so one of the things about Access Humboldt uh, and uh, KZZH is bringing uh, that information to a brand new audience who may have never, you know, may never have heard you for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. So we do encourage, and I do encourage, and work with locals who uh, uh, are doing their own radio programs, podcasting programs that work as, like I mentioned, podcasting is essentially a radio program. Mm -hmm. And so you know, it's a part of our mission to give people uh, a voice on the air. Have you had pretty good participation from local volunteers who come in and make their own programs? Yes. Uh, there's never enough. Uh, we are content hungry, so we're always looking for, for new stuff. But yeah, we do have a cadre of volunteers mm -hmm. who, um, who help us. Um, for example, I just got an email from one of our uh, volunteers, Izzy Vanderheiden, who uh, uh, reads the community calendar every week. So this is one of the things that we do is we uh, uh, get information from nonprofits who are holding events. We compile it into an audio uh, calendar that gets recorded on Friday morning and then is played out throughout the week. So people, um, nonprofits can tell people you know about fundraisers, about you know pancake breakfasts, about you know whatever, whatever it is they're doing. Um, so um, she's one of our volunteers. We have Nate, who who produces a number of shows. One is called Civic Union, which he talks to uh, local elected officials, talks about the jobs that they're doing and what their challenges are. Mm -hmm. um, I also produce a show called Thursday Night Talk with Talvi Freed as our host, and we talk to you know uh, people in the community find out what their issues, their problems, uh, you know, that they're facing, uh, or not just problems, also good things and fun things that people are doing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that we think people ought to know about. So I can always use more of that kind of programming. Uh, All right, well, okay. So, so tell me, walk me through that. Like, if I'm someone who says, yeah, I'd like to do a, a radio program, but I don't know anything about it. Can you kind of walk me through what I would need to do to step up to do that? Yeah. Well, one of the nice things that happens here at Access Humboldt is we provide education to people. Okay, so come in the offices here and express the interest, first right. of all, and then you'll just kind of like guide them from there. Well, I... It's not necessary for radio, uh, but if you're going to take classes here, it always helps to become a member of Access Humboldt. Which I'm a member. It's yes, you like, are. What, thirty dollars uh, a year? It's twenty-five. Twenty-five dollars yeah. a year. Yeah. I mean, come on. That's, and, and and this is nonprofit. That's right, and that supports our helps to support our mission. Yes, absolutely. But one of the classes that uh, we offer is called podcasting. Oh. So we we. Uh, turn people on to wh what the possibilities of recording themselves and turning um, that uh, recording into a program. So we teach them uh, various bits of equipment from the various sim simplest pieces of equipment, say recording on your smartphone yeah, yeah. to recording with a, a computer and microphone setups with headphones and then also give them the information about how a show might go together. Things like, you know, 
your, you, the intro to the show and the, and the ending or outro to the show and, and breaks and, and suggestions on how to keep it interesting and how to, you know, um, you know, just to make it something that people want to listen to. What a fantastic experience that would be for somebody who has the interest to do it. I guess I'm at, they'd also have to have a passion for an idea they want to cover. Is there any, you mentioned you want more programming. Is there any specific areas you'd like that you don't have programming in that you would love to see that come to mind? I mentioned Radio Bilingue and the Spanish-speaking community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we definitely want to reach into those communities that are underrepresented, like, uh -huh. you know, maybe like the Hmong community, uh -huh. um, you know, the people of color in this community that don't necessarily have a voice on in, in mainstream media. Um, you know, so those are areas that, that, that we're really interested in in doing, you know, and having the people use their voices and talk to the community about the, their issues, the things that interest them, um, and, you know, and these are ways I think that we all get to know each other better, we all, you know, understanding, uh, you know, uh, in this, you know, I don't want to go negative, but in this country, you know, just people understanding each other uh, as human beings it sometimes seems uh, a hard road to go. And so I, I, my personal feeling is that these kinds of, um, of programmings helps us down the road towards a better understanding of each other. Also, the nonprofit community, uh, you know, uh, a lot of times people, they sort of labor in obscurity, you know, yeah. people don't know what it is that they're doing, what they're about. They haven't heard about, you know, the great things that they're doing here in this community. Mm -hmm. uh, and so um, programs that shine a light on, on, on those on the nonprofit sector um, are always welcome here. We can help to develop those kinds of, 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 of shows and, uh, you know, really get people using their voices. So you've kind of given me a nice picture where, where uh, KZZH is now. Is there any uh, directions in the future, equipment upgrades or anything else? Where do you see the future going on there? KZZH is a, uh, a station that runs on a shoestring budget. Uh, it was started with a $5,000 grant, which uh, people that know radio, I think, um, are always amazed when they hear what we did with a, that small amount of money, yeah. because uh, you know it, that's a very small amount of money to start a radio station. Mm -hmm. um, we had to buy a transmitter, microphones, boards, you know, computers, um, all that, all that sort of thing to get the station going. So money is always an issue for us, and you know, uh, one of the things that we you know, an area that's kind of been neglected and, and we wish was people paid more attention to is underwriting. So um, we would love to have people support us financially in exchange for, you know, uh, messaging on the radio station. So you can always get in contact with Monique, who's our uh, underwriting person here at Access Humboldt. If you go to um, accesshumboldt.net, you can find her contact information. Mm -hmm. It's Monique at accesshumble.net. One of the things that I've always, you know, I've been in public radio uh, for a long time. I, you know, was with the, the university's uh, station as a volunteer for over 20 years. And, um, you know, one of the things that uh, working on the fundraising uh, at that station, the people that support the state, these kinds of stations are the people that, under, that understand it and use it themselves, right? Mm. So when you say underwriting, people think, oh, it's like a, a car commercial or something. But, you know, we, we don't do, we cannot uh, do, you know, like um, appeals that are, are calls to action where, hey, come down and buy our cars or, hey, buy, come down and buy our you tacos. You can't sell a service or a product. Can't sell a service or a product. Right, which is understandable because this is a nonprofit. That's right. Huh? But what we can do is tell people uh, that you, what your business is, where it is, how to find out more, and more importantly, that your business supports community radio, that you support information, uh, the free flow of information and uh, the local voices that are on the radio station, and people appreciate that when they when they hear your name, 
uh, uh, supporting either you know our station or JPR or one of the other you know uh, stations. They they appreciate that you, you are co a community minded business, right? So that's your opportunity to help us, and so. Uh, with money like that, we can plow. We we would plow right back into more and better programming, more and better equipment. Um, you know, better outreach uh, into you know, you know different communities, um, and it just allows us some certainty from year to year that we don't have at this point. Because, like I said, basically uh, we run this station on my staff time and on a small cadre of volunteers that I mentioned before, um, none of whom gets paid, all of whom who do it for the love of, of radio and for the love of this community. So, I mean, if you are a business owner and you want to join, or an individual, and you want to join in on that, you know, you're always welcome. Um, we also have a Patreon. So uh, Patreon is a way that you can kick in a couple bucks uh, a month to keep uh, the radio coming to the community. Mm. So um, can you tell me, the, the, there, there are other radio stations in this community. Yep. What sort of s sets apart KZZH um, as far as its mission compared to the other ones? What, what sort of distinguishes it, KZZH from all the other radio stations we have out here? Right, well, of course, commercial radio stations um, are in it to, to, you know, they are in it for the profit motive. Right. They're, 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 they're making money, and the, we have, we're, we're blessed with some really great commercial radio stations here in yes. Humboldt County. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so, uh, not taken away from anything that they do, but you're not going to get the same access as a citizen of this county to a commercial radio station. Oh, you're right. You, you could, I couldn't walk in and say, I want to host some show on a local commercial. I see, I see that. Yeah, that is a distinction. So, and e that even goes for, uh, you know, it's the, you know, sort of the sorry state of KHSU, you know, which is really rebroadcasting, um, you know, Sacramento radio uh, for our community, really has a, a, just a very little local, uh, anything that you could point to that say it would, you could call pro local programming. So they're not really invested in the community anymore. They used to be very invested, they're not anymore, but uh, you definitely couldn't go to them and say, hey, I've got an idea for a program. You could come to us and say, "Listen, I, you know, I represent XYZ nonprofit, or I, I, I'm doing this interesting. I'm an artist, and I'm doing this interesting art, art piece of artwork, and I'd either like to be interviewed on one of the many shows that we have that would interview people like this, like this one, Community Voices, or uh, I want to create programming that will be interesting to to people and uh, in our community, and so." Our answer is, we love it, absolutely. You know, let's yeah. talk about it. Let's let's figure out a way to make that happen, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's the major difference between. I'm just going to say it. It's it's a blanket statement, but all of the other stations in in Humboldt County, we are, um, you know, we're a, here. We're your community voice. We want to bring you. Uh, into the conversation, we want you to tell the community what you're up to. So that really is is why we're here. Yeah, you feel a niche that's not being filled by anything else. I, I hear that. Um, okay, so can you give me an example of a a person who came in, didn't have any experience, totally so, solely no, motivated, that walked in here and is now doing their own show on KZH? Do you have an example of a person like that? Well, totally. Uh, you know, Nate Dog, uh, yeah. who who produces the Civic Union show that I mentioned before, yeah. uh, is he's not a stranger to radio. He he was the program director at K Mud for a while and uh -huh. and and that sort of thing, but he literally contacted me and said, "Hey, I've got this idea for this sh this show. Uh -huh. um, it's called well, the first show that he did was something called Get to Know Your Local Nonprofit." Uh -huh. And so that was uh, a chance for uh, uh, nonprofits to talk about what they're doing. So he came in, did the show here. Um, it's kind of been in hiatus, but they're 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 bringing it back. He also came in and did um, 
a show uh, called the Civic Union, which I mentioned before, which is talking to local electeds. Uh -huh. um, and so since then, he's gone on to start helping other people do their shows. Oh, wow. So uh, um, I, I don't want to jump the shark. I don't want to I don't talk about things that haven't happened yet. But yeah. he's got two, two or three other shows that he's working with local people. Wow. So wow. he's a person who's bringing people into the station and helping them realize what the, what they are what they want to do. Yeah. Uh, one of the oldest shows on this station is something called the Quantum Alignment that's done by uh, Dr. Pepper Hernandez. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I know her. her yeah, yeah. Pepper, yeah, Pepper's great. She she started off doing it as a podcast. It's still a podcast, uh -huh. but um, she came to me and said, you know, hey, you know. Um, do you think uh, there'd be an audience for this on uh, on KZZH? And here we are, uh, almost seven years later. She's the oldest, long, continuous running show on KZZH, and so <laughs> she's another person in our community who, who's uh, doing things. I mentioned Thursday Night Talk uh, with Talvi Freed. Um, that was a show that was originally on KHSU that uh, we brought back, um, and along with. Other shows, for example, um, uh, we do a show here called Art Attitude with Wendy Butler, sure. who did a show called Art Waves on KHSU for many years. And so she's another person who came in and said, hey, I'd like to bring this show back. Um, it's a show about artists and dancers and musicians and, and, and artsy things that are happening in Humboldt County. So there's another example of someone who just said, hey, I've got this idea. Would you be interested in doing the show? And my answer was absolutely. Yeah, and, and the difference would be um, because on the on the visual media, people have are maybe uncomfortable being on camera. The nice thing about this, the, the radio is you don't have to have your face on camera. Although so I can see the attraction for some people. Yeah. Yeah. That's true enough. I mean, there's some people that are camera shy and some that aren't. I mean, that's just the way the world works. Yeah, true enough. Although I do, I will say that I do like to produce things for all platforms. Well, you so, do. You yeah. do it all. Yeah, oh, yeah so you do that, what, what most of the shows that I produce or are involved in producing uh -huh. also end up on our television channels on Channel 12, mm -hmm. uh, also end up on our YouTube page, which is a great place to go uh, see. Uh, we also maintain an archive at internet.org. Mm -hmm. So in, any of the shows that we produce in-house, uh, you can go back and listen to shows we did you know, two, three years ago or even longer. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it, it radio the 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 old the old joke that I hear a lot about having a face for radio and def, definitely guilty there. Uh, but you know uh, we we do like to try and, and get uh, your face on the TV as well if we can. Yeah, because everything you said for KZZH also goes for your visual your video media. People could also come in and set up shows. Okay, so we talked a lot about all this community access media. Can you can kind of talk about in sort of a higher minded why this is so important? Because I, I know throughout the nation, community access media has is slowly going away. Why should we all care about having access media in our community? Well, I, I think the if you're fine with top-down uh, media where someone in an office somewhere that may not be in your city, might not be in your state, or even in your country, is deciding what it is that you hear, right, and the information that's, that comes your way, well then, you know, maybe, maybe it's time for, uh, you know, access media to go away. But our philosophy is, is that we're bottom-up, right, and we, we want to hear from the people you know that are living the lives uh, that they're living, and uh, you know, and have something to say to the community. And we really think it's important that that filter in between what you need to say uh, responsibly, right? Yeah. We we don't we're not you know we're not going to be a platform for hate speech. We're not going to be a platform for misinformation. Right. Uh, we're we're we you know, but you know, opinions matter. Information matters. Local matters, right? right? right. So we we uh, you know that's the I think why you know access media is important. And you know you could it could it's, as you mentioned uh, it's it is dying on the vine in many places. Um, 
we're blessed here in Humboldt County. People seem to appreciate what we do here at Access Humboldt. The elected officials appreciate it. Um, average citizens appreciate it. Um, do we wish there were more people involved? Yes. Do we wish that we, you know, had better, more stable streams of funding? Absolutely, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we, we do what we can do and we do it every day and whether or not, you know, we're here in 10 years, whether we're the same organization in 10 years, I can't really say. You know, we're living in the now. We're, we're, we're trying to do the best that we can mm -hmm. with what we're given and hopefully that's meaningful to the community. Absolutely. Well said. I appreciate you saying that. Any, any last thoughts about KZZH or Access Media? Well, if you don't know us and if you haven't checked us out on your radio, hopefully you own a radio, uh, uh, 96.7, uh, check us out. You can also get us uh, online at kzzh.accesshumble.net. If you want to talk to me or get in contact with me about potential shows, my name is Matt, M-A-T-T, -T, at accesshumble.net. Hit me up with an email. We can talk about... Uh, your thoughts and what you might want to bring to the community. Well, great. I think we're running out of time, but before we go, I just wanted to extend an invitation to anybody who wants to come and join Access Media. Um, it, Matt and the others are waiting here with open arms to help you express whatever it is you want to express with their guidance. So, uh, well, I just want to thank Matt Knight for joining me in chit-chatting here. And if you have any other questions or want to know more information about Access Humboldt, check out their really well done website, accesshumboldt.net. That's it. And um, thanks, Matt, for spending some time here and telling me more about KZZH Radio. Glad to do it. Yeah. Okay, well, we hope to see you next time on Community Voices, right here in the Access Humboldt Studios. Thanks for joining us on Community Voices. If you represent a nonprofit that is interested in being a guest on Community Voices, email info at accesshumble.net. Access Humboldt, local voices through community media.